Nice question here is for from Dave. Uh, how's it going, Dave? Did you buy your your bricks? <laughs> Remember the throwing them at the Oh TV? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Dave asks this: God provided commandments that specifically provide guidance, but then there are inferred references throughout the Bible that calls actions abominations. Just because those abominations are not commandments, shouldn't Christians treat them as commandments? I hear many Christians say that they want God to judge the abominations, thereby relieving them of taking a stand, i.e. speaking out against homosexuality and similar abominations. What position should Christians be taking? Well, I think, you know, when I, whenever I look at this stuff, uh, the, there's a reason that, that God has stated certain things about certain sins. And, and so um, l- let me just, actually, I'm going to take you to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Let's see. It says, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? This is 6.9. Uh, do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Okay? And such were some of you. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. And when you go through that list, this is one of the things that I did when I was a young Christian. Um, you know, I, I, I had kind of a lax attitude towards my sin. You know, everybody thinks that they're a great guy um, and, until they, they run into the Lord and run into what the Word has to say. And so I had a kind of at lax attitude towards my sin. So I decided one time to do a study on my sin, uh, my besetting sins or the things that I had done and see what God had to say about them. And this is one of those, one of those passages that talks about it. Um, out of this, let's see, one, two, three. Well, the th- one, one of them I didn't do, but I wanted to. Four, five, six, seven. Seven out of the seven out of that whole group are things that I've done, and um, those are those are things that get the wrath of God on them. And when I went through the Old Testament, I found out that a lot of the things that I had done, I would have gotten the death penalty for in the Old Testament. And so it's, you know, this stuff is not confined to homosexuality. Um, homosexuality is one of those things that's an abomination. But there are other things that um, I have done that are an abomination. And um, one, of the, one of the things that I keep in mind when I'm uh, looking at the issue of sin and salvation and what what our witness is supposed to be, um, I'm I'm not a guy who is afraid of telling uh, people what the Bible has to say about sin. And uh, anybody who knows me knows that I'm not like that. But when I'm talking to people um, uh, about their lives, they they don't need to clean their lives up. I'm not interested in them cleaning their lives up. What I'm interested in is them knowing Jesus. And so I was just talking to a friend of mine the other day, and he was talking to me about a situation with a with a couple of lesbian girls. Um, and I can't remember what the whole situation was, but I, I think it had something to do with his family or something. And, and he knew that he was going to have to have a conversation with them. And he was asking basically the same question, what should I, what should I do in this situation? And um, I said, well, what do they need? And he goes, well, they need to get out of that lifestyle. And, you know, and he's going through a list of, of things that needed to happen for, for them. And um, you know, basically in the conversation, I said, so they get out of that lifestyle and where are they going? And they're still going to hell. And, and so that's not what they need. What they need is Jesus. And so when I, whenever I'm talking to anybody, I don't care where they're coming from. I don't care what, they, what they've done or what they're doing. I'm not, I'm not interested in changing their lifestyle. What I'm interested in is bringing them to Christ. And when you bring somebody to Jesus, then they, then they change their lifestyle. And that's the way that it's supposed to work. If, it, if, if it's not done that way, all you're doing is putting Band-Aids on gaping wounds. Um, there, there's nobody on this planet that goes to heaven by getting their marriage right. There's nobody on this planet that goes to heaven uh, by reading a Bible. There's no, nobody on this planet who goes to heaven by uh, getting a job or um, changing who they have sex with. Nobody's going to heaven for any of those things. They go to heaven because 
They've, been, they've given their life to Christ. Now, when they give their life to Christ, then the Holy Spirit convicts them and, and turns them away from those things. And so generally speaking, when, when I'm talking to people, if I, if, if I know that I'm talking to somebody who is homosexual, I, I never bring up homosexuality, never. I don't, I don't say a word about it until they do. And when they do, then, then I'll answer uh, their questions kindly and I'll show them what the Bible has to say. But the focus um, is always on Jesus. It's, it's always on, on, uh, on coming to Christ and there needs to be repentance and so I've had situations where I have talked to people like that, uh, who are who are from that lifestyle. Um, uh, a lot of times, though, um, most of the people, and you know, I'm not I'm not generally talking to people who are homosexual every day. Um, the people I'm generally talking to are people who are into sexual immorality, and so I, I've been speaking with people who are shacking up. They you know they're they're living with their girlfriend or with their boyfriend, and sometimes they have kids. Uh, out of wedlock and that kind of thing, and they want to they want to give their life to Christ, and and so I'm like, okay, and so we'll pray, you know, I'll I'll talk to them about what it means to be a Christian, and and then then I'll just say things like, even if whether I know what they're doing or not, I'll do this with people. I'll go, you know, that you give your life to Christ. There are things that need to change. You're going you're going to have to turn away from some of the things that you're doing. And um, I, I usually don't have to have a conversation with them about what those things are. They, you know, they're, they're in the forefront of their minds when, when they're coming up. And a lot of times it's at that point that they're starting to talk to me about this and that and what should I do and, and that kind of thing. And you know, the first thing they need to do is know Jesus. And then the second thing they need to do is turn away from their sin. And so uh, sometimes that's a process. You know, I had a lot of drunks come to Christ and I've had a lot of druggies come to Christ. And uh, sometimes Jesus just takes it away and sometimes they struggle with it for a period of time. Uh, but in any case, uh, uh, people don't need morality. What they need is Jesus. And so that's, that's where you start and then Jesus gives them the morality. So on the, on the thing of commandment versus, what was the word that? Abomination. Abomination, um, like I'm reading in First Corinthians, but I say this as a concession, not a commandment. And he, there's other places where Paul says that, but Paul's an apostle of Christ. So just because it's not in the Ten Commandments or, or it's not worded as a commandment, it's still basically stuff that you should be doing. Yeah, you know, it's like if the, right? if the Bible says something, then yeah. Because people like to play them games. Well, yeah. show me where that commandment is written. But like Paul says, his concession as, a, as an apostle of Christ is we should be doing it. Right. You know, when, when, I'm, when I'm talking to a person like that, I, I'm... You know, I'm I'm talking to somebody who needs to grow up. Uh, you know, when when we go to the scripture, um, this is supposed. You know, the the Bible talks about those who tremble at His word, and the the fact that we're supposed to have a, a respect for the word of God and, and uh, a holy fear of the Lord. And the word fear in Greek does not just mean respect; it means fear. And so it's the, the idea that I'm afraid to uh, be on the wrong side of the Lord. I'm, a, I'm afraid to disappoint him. I'm afraid to make him angry. I'm afraid. I'm, I'm, I'm fearful of that. And I, I don't want to go near that. And I think that lots of Christians need to have that. If I'm dealing with somebody who's, who's like, well, I don't have to do that and, and starts giving me a bunch of excuses, then we'll have a talk about that too. And usually, you know, I'm, I'm pretty gentle about that with, with somebody who's a brand new believer, um, somebody who's been a believer for decades and is doing that, you know, a little, uh, I'll get a little bit more stiff with them. I get more, a little more intense with them yeah. because that's just nothing but nonsense. You know, uh, God knows better than I do um, how I'm supposed to live my life. Now, having said that, let me give you a story from my life. I uh, wanted to go out with a girl and um, she was a non-Christian and I had a buddy, his name is Gil. Gil said to me when I, when he, uh, found out I was going to date her this one night. Uh, he said to me, is she a Christian? And I said, uh, no. And he goes, I don't think you're supposed to be going out with Christians, Steve. And I go, what makes you think that? And he takes me to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, where it says, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. And he reads the thing to me and I go, that's not what it means. <laughs> that's what I said. And the reason that I said that is because um, I didn't want to do that. That's the reason I said that. And so I wanted to go out with her. And when he said, well, what are you going to do when you go out with her? I said, I'm going to witness to her. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna tell her about Jesus. And so I did go out with her. And so did I tell her about Jesus? No. Yeah, no, not at all. And when I came back home and uh, I was talking to Gil, uh, we lived together at the time. Um, when I came back home, Gil said, first thing Gil said to me was, so did you witness to her? And I said, shut up. <laughs> A lot of times that's how our conversations would go. And so uh, I was immature and um, I, I needed to, um, have a fear of God and I needed to have a, have a fear of his word and a, and a respect towards it. And I didn't have it at the time. It was after that, that I backslid and, uh, I got, uh, I got a good taste of the world once again and, uh, came back and decided to change my tune. So I think that lots of Christians need to grow up and just do, you know, you just pay attention to the word and you don't get to take the old Testament and just chuck it. You know, that's the new Testament is three quarters old Testament. And so um, if, if there's something that's not done in the New Testament that you find in the Old Testament, the reason it's not done is because um, it was something that was specifically pointed to Israel, for example, um, taking the year off every seven years in planting your land. That was something that was designed for the nation of Israel. It's a good idea. You know, it rests the land and stuff like that. But it was a, it was something that was a command for for the nation of Israel. And so you have things that are commands that are specifically Israeli, and um, other things are uh, fulfilled. And so we don't do sacrifices because we have a sacrifice. It's Jesus, and um, the Sabbath day is has been fulfilled. My Sabbath is Jesus, and you know uh, those kinds of things. But they're fulfilled. They're not done away with. Or they're not ignored. And so the same morality you have in the Old Testament is the same, same morality you have in the New Testament. So when God said, um, thou shalt not commit adultery, um, guess what? He still means it. And when he said, don't be greedy, he still means it. And when he said, don't lie, he still means it. When he said, don't steal, he still means it. You know, none of that's changed. God doesn't change. And so you need to watch out if you're one of those people who's going to the Bible and saying that doesn't apply to me. Because you're liable to find out that it does. <laughs> yep. 